his statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Ahmed Awad Isse, Minister for Foreign Affairs of Somalia. Madam President, Secretary General, Excellencies, Heads of Delegates, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to begin by congratulating you and your beloved country of Ecuador for the presence of the General Assembly of this year. Let me also take this opportunity to thank your predecessor for steering the previous session of the General Assembly with admirable skill. On behalf of my government and the people of Somalia, I wish to express our sympathy and condolences to the Indonesian people and government on the recent deadly tsunami which claimed hundreds of human lives. Madam President, it is a profound honor for me to address the United Nations General Assembly on behalf of the President of the Federal Republic of Somalia. Our administration has now completed one and a half years, whereas I'm glad to say that we have significantly made huge strides in the security sector reform and in political and economic transformation. We are mindful of the enormous challenges that we face in fixing Somalia, and especially in overcoming the, ter the threats of terrorism. I'm equally mindful of the huge expectations that our people have in our president's leadership and in providing lasting solutions to the challenges of security. It is for that reason that our president, His Excellency Muhammad Abdullahi Muhammad, had spent six weeks at the defense headquarters and spent time at various defense positions, giving directions and on-the-ground approvals at the forward operating bases. We have initiated a new round of operations that have successfully opened up road networks, supply routes, and in turn liberated towns and villages from the occupation of al-Shabaab terrorists. We recognize providing lasting solutions to the challenge of security is an immense undertaking. It is one that needs multifaceted approach. While we, together with, the part, with our partners, militarily take out and dismantle all terrorist hideouts, we are also engaging our religious leaders, elders, the youth, women, and civil society groups to turn the tide against the twisted ideology of hate and religious intolerance. The silver lining is young men and women are not joining al-Shabaab out of a desirable appeal. That ideology is no longer popular. Al-Shabaab and Al-Qaeda do not have a ready stream of new and volunteer recruits in Somalia, not anymore. It is also important to note that some within their ranks, mostly the young men and women, have heeded our amnesty offer, denounced violence, and peacefully surrender it. 
senior commanders, former sector heads, and infantrymen have unconditionally surrendered as well, bringing with them arsenal and non-standard tactical vehicles known in military terms as technicalists. The combination of these factories has further weakened the terror network's logistical and planning capabilities. Al-Shabaab now largely exists as an amorphous network that operates as an irregular outfit, one that plans terror attacks from the shadows, but not as a strong uh, insurgent force that can sustain resistance. We are now engaged in the creation of civil networks to encourage a healthy partnership between law enforcement and communities to flush out remnant terrorists. Our people acknowledge that sustaining security is a collective responsibility. This awareness has in turn helped us establish effective policing models that involve the public. Our quest for a peaceful and stable Somalia would not stop defeating, would not stop at defeating Al-Shabaab, but it is the first step. Our comprehensive security sector reform is the basis for developing the capacity, streamlining, strategizing, and implementing a practical transition that envisions an effective force and steady security institutions. We recognize that promoting justice, respecting the rule of law, and protecting people's rights is a key component in peace building. This quest includes an organized, gradual, and systematic transfer of security tasks to forces agreed in our national security architecture, while at the same time establishing political and economic measures to support and sustain the transition at the federal, state, and community level. On behalf of the Somali people, of the pe on behalf of the people of Somalia, I unequivocally say we are truly grateful to the brave men and women who served and continue serving in the African Union mission for Somalia. They have made huge sacrifices to keep our people safe, and that shall never be forgotten. We remain indebted to them. To consolidate our collective gains in security and to further support the Somali security institutions to enable us to take over from AMISOM, I call on the UN to lift the arms embargo on Somalia. This embargo has been long standing. It is, it is what is leveling the field in our battle with the terrorist groups. When our force has the same fighting arsenal as the enemy, the odds are split. Stronger fighting capacity would enable us to have the upper hand. It would entirely dismantle the terrorists and possibly within a shorter time. Madam President, it is our administration's foremost objective that we expand the democratic space of our people. It should be a sacrosanct that every Somali enjoys the inalienable rights to life, freedoms, and protections enshrined in our provisional constitution, including freedom of the press, freedom of association, and even the freedom to petition the government for redress from grievance. And that is the reason why we are winning the fight against terrorists. Our people have been suppressed and subjugated for a long time by the terrorist networks. 
These freedoms and protections mean a lot to them. Individually and collectively, our people and communities recognize that it is the responsibility of their government to protect their liberties. Our people equally appreciate that for the government to do that, we must all operate within the realms of our constitution. One of our core values is the protection, support, and giving platform to minority groups, communities, and those with special needs. Our people acknowledge that for the system of governance to be effective, the rule of law must reign supreme. Only then can we attain the vision of, prosperous, of a prosperous Somalia. As we mark 18 years since the rebirth of our republic at Arta in Djibouti, our quest for inclusive and reformed politics is on the right track. We have an agreed upon election model adopted jointly by the central government and the federal member states in Baidawa in June of this year and endorsed by the international community in Brussels during the Somalia Partnership Forum in July. We acknowledge that it is election period for some of the federal member states. Our role as the central government would be to promote transparent, free, and fair processes. Madam President, we have set specific goals in economic, in economic development. We do have frameworks for key deliverables in attaining goals towards sustainable productivity in agriculture, fisheries, and livestock. Somalia enjoys the double blessings of a strategic location on the Horn of Africa and a vast wealth in natural resources. Significant oil re reserves, natural gas, and iron ore, arable and productive fields, as well as Africa's second longest coastal line after the island of Madagascar, provide enormous opportunities for sustainable output. This government's objective is to tap into these opportunities, transform our economy, streamline our trade and investment policies, and open up new trade routes, horizons for our people. In that regard, we are seeking to strengthen alliances with our core partners to promote trade and investment opportunities, even as we widen our scope in our quest for broader, far-reaching economic cooperation. We seek to strengthen strategic partnerships with our neighbors, the continent and the world where we share mutual interests in economic development, security, and social cooperation. One of the key priorities of this government is to promote sustainable fiscal policies to grow our economy and instill the discipline required to maintain it. Somalia is committed to working purposefully, purposefully towards financial self-sufficiency and as a result, reaching the crucial sustainable development goals. Through the IMF staff monitored program, we have raised domestic revenue to unprecedented levels, and we are in the process of normalizing relations with the international financial institutions through continuous dialogue and meaningful engagement. These efforts are edging us closer towards debt relief. Somalia is committed to boost economic integration and free trade flow across the region. The Horn of Africa is undergoing a remarkable political and economic transformation. Somalia is proud to be taking a leading role in the quest for the economic integration of the Horn. 
and in taking mediator role in ending decades-long conflicts that have dogged the region, contributing towards realizing the African Union's goal of silencing the gun by 2020. A new dawn of leadership is at hand in the Horn of Africa, and a stronger desire to bolster historical ties for common interests provides the means for effective cooperation among the countries of the region. To achieve our common goal of economic progress and prosperity for the Horn of Africa, I humbly call on the United Nations to lift all economic sanctions on our neighbor, Eritrea. This move would ease follow of imports and exports, movement of people and businesses, and it would fulfill our vision for the successful economic integration of the region. There is evidence everywhere that Africa is on the move towards greater connectivity and prosperity. East Africa is becoming the continent's fastest growing region as Africa becomes the world's largest free trade area. It is time for us to turn our focus on and encourage intra-African investment. Somalia, with its potential and resources, is committed to move with the continent. We have recently joined the commercial trade block, and we have also applied admittance into a number of other trade and economic blocks. Madam President, it is only by expanding the prospects for open markets, free trade, investments, and policies that ease movement of people and businesses between the countries of Africa that we can bring solutions for domestic, economic, and social changes and social challenges that we face and work towards realizing Agenda 2063 of the African Union. We need to formulate joint policies that provide lasting solutions for illegal immigration, policies that expand our scopes and vision in economic and social progress that result in bringing about job creation and opportunities for our youth, provide meaningful employment and improve quality of education. It should no longer be business as usual when year in and year out, we are losing hundreds of young productive men and women to the Mediterranean, ostensibly in search for better living prospects. It is even ironic that this happiness, as the world focuses on Africa for its resources, markets, and labor. Madam President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I am hopeful that better days and better pros prospects are ahead for all of us. For Somalia, it is the beginning of a transformation. We have risen anew and fresh we are not only optimistic, but we are also motivated. Our security is improving. Our economy is on an upward scale. Our foreign policy has already received accolades in the region and beyond. We are focused on keeping pace with the ever-changing dynamics in economy and technology and embracing new ideas. And as such, we are open to all investments. We are ready for business. Thank you. I thank the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Somalia for his statement. I now give the floor. To His Excellency, Mr. Alpha Bari, Minister for Foreign Affairs and Cooperation of Burkina Faso.